Wow, hi, this is Chris. I'm Chris Leatham with uh, The Economy and You here at Think Tech uh, Hawaii. And uh, I'm so happy to be back uh, here on the show. And my guest today is the one and only Karen Awana, former member of the House of Representatives and currently Vice Chair of AHA. Welcome to the show, Karen. Aloha, Chris. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I appreciate it. Well, you know, uh, it's been a very interesting few weeks, hasn't it, with AHA? Yes, it is. Four fun-filled weeks um, working with our Native Hawaiian community and seeing different perspectives on the issue on sovereignty, independence, and all those things wrapped up uh -huh. to one. Yeah, I bet it was exciting. It was exciting. Yes. It, it's an experience that I've never been placed in, um, but I found it extremely rewarding mm -hmm. and also a learning opportunity for me to see other um, points of view, other perspectives that I may have not otherwise have considered had I not attended the yeah. AHA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you were in the House of Representatives up until a couple of years ago. You're looking to run again. Yes, yes, I am. Yes, yes. Are you excited about that? I'm excited. Yes, we <laughs> always are. You know, running, running for office is a mm -hmm. really sort of energizing experience. Yes. I mean, it's yes. labor intensive. Oh my God, mm -hmm. it's so labor intensive. But there's something about that that, is in, that invigorates your soul, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so um, you, you already filed your papers? I've pulled papers, but I have yet to file. We're still collecting signatures. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who, who are telling me, wait, we want to sign on. We want to make sure that our names are on, that, um, uh, on, on, the, on, the list on the list before we go ahead and uh -huh. um, submit it. So you want you got to get all those John Hancocks all, all lined up. All the John up. Hancocks. Yes, 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 yes. So are you excited? I mean, are you thrilled? I'm, yes, I'm excited. Yes. And I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, times like these, it creates a lot of... Um, energy, as you had made, made mention, uh -huh. as well as letting um, people out there realize that there is hope. A lot of times people feel down and out and they don't want to participate. But once you engage with them and share with them the things that, um, that has been working on, projects that we're moving forward, uh -huh. they seem to come to a better realization. You know, one of the big challenges that I, I, I've seen mm -hmm. is getting people engaged in the process. Uh, letting them know that they can be empowered and can contribute meaningfully to the governance of our state. Definitely. You know. Yes, and as you know, and uh, many of your viewers may be aware of that, unfortunately, Hawaii is one of those states with the lowest voter turnout. Um, we need to do, make changes to change, you know, turn it around mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. get a higher percentage. Um, so that our voices are heard yes. and that it is a true reflection of, you know, it is a people's government. Yes, and I want to propose a new piece of legislation. No surfing and no fishing on election day. <laughs> or everyone gets a day off so that they can <laughs> yeah, make no. sure that you're at, uh, yeah. at the voting polls. That's right. You, mm -hmm. you can get off work, but you don't get to fish, you don't get to, you don't get to go surfing. You yeah. have to come in and vote first. First, and then yes. you can do the then fishing and Then you can go surfing. play. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah. So, um, you know, we have, uh, Wainite Coast has had some interesting challenges over the year with everything from trash to uh, traffic, uh, congestion, housing has been a challenge out there. We haven't had quite the economic growth in that area as we had in other parts of the island. Mm -hmm. And and so that's uh, created some, some challenges. I know there's been some problems uh, out that way too with uh, substance abuse issues and, and other things that kind of come with not, you know, with low income you know, low, low, low income environment. Um, you've tried to work on these through the years. I, I know that you've worked on traffic, yes. uh, most especially. Uh, yes. Um, in the area of traffic, we've worked um, tirelessly. Uh, as a matter of fact, before becoming a legislator, I served on the Waianae Coast Neighborhood Board. Mm -hmm. I chaired the Transportation Committee. And at that time, we discussed, I think that was back in early 2000, we talked about the lights and making sure the lights were timed in a manner so that traffic could flow um, through the Farrington Highway corridor. Yeah. Um, so that would be like a short range project, a little bit medium, longer range project would be uh, the additional turn lane mm -hmm. um, at our bottleneck, which would be between, for those who are familiar with the area, between Nanakuli and Haleakala right, Avenues. Right, right. Um, because currently, if there is, um, you have two lanes going in one direction, if a bus stops... The bus stops the right-hand lane, yeah. and then the guy in the left-hand lane wants to turn left. There you go. Jammed up. There you go. And then you do that multiplying effect, right? Yes. Where you have traffic stopped uh -huh. all the way into Kapolei. 
See, I have a theory with buses. They should just slow down, not stop. And just tell them to just jump Just slow off. down, jump. <laughs> jump in, jump out. <laughs> <laughs> that should be interesting. That should be interesting to see something that's like right, that. That's right, that's right. Uh, so um, that's a medium-range project. And then also another project that I've been um, working on since being on the Neighborhood Board, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. is to have an additional roadway lead out of the Waianae Coast. So how would they do that, though? I mean, is geographically, is that, is, that, is that a doable thing? I mean, I believe be there's a doable thing. You yeah. know, Chris, if we can put people on the moon, we can get another road out of the Waianae Coast. Well, then if you, if you take a, a road out of the Waianae Coast, um, are you going to head toward Hala, Hala Town, or would you I, head more toward Milani, or what would be the ideal scenario mm -hmm. there? Well, I think that's where the community input comes in. And, to, and as, as you know, Chris, our island is changing at such a quick rate economies of scale may change in certain areas so right. it might be more feasible to have the route redirected in one um, direction or another depending upon the time that we're going to go ahead and move this project forward well is there well not because that's a, that is an interesting idea so as far as having a second road um, coming in and out of there because mm -hmm. that would also provide an emergency um, you know if there was an emergency if there's a, a, a typhoon or something that hits mm -hmm. the Waianae coast uh, and it would allow for traffic to get out of the way much more easily. Yes, because currently your the response is head to the mountains, right? And then uh -huh. there's nothing beyond that. That's why everybody basically. drives four-wheel drive. There you go. That's why right? everybody has a four-wheel <laughs> drive truck. And driving on the beaches and uh, finding right. their own way path to get from yeah. next Hey, no road. I make one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Don't exactly. worry. I'll make my own road. Yeah. Um, so um, now, one of the things out there, and I noticed, is that property values out there are still um, not nearly as high as other parts of the island. And I would suppose that's a good thing and a bad thing. Well, interestingly enough, I was approached by our kupuna in the area, and they were upset because their property values increased by about 8% in relationship to other neighboring communities. And they were concerned about that. So Because of property tax implications. Yes. So right. property tax implication is, <coughs> as well as they're seeing an inequality mm -hmm. in relationship to other areas. So that's another issue that I'm working with the city and company. Well, you know, because if, if you look at areas like Manoa, you have people there. Every congratulations. I remember Abercrombie gave a speech when he was um, still a legislator, and he goes, "Congratulations, you're all millionaires." Mm. Trouble is, you have to sell your home in order to yeah. collect your million dollars. Yeah. Uh, right. And of course, then if you, unless you, you know, met a certain age requirement or fit a certain category. Uh, the taxes were, um, you know, arduous, mm -hmm. and um, with the rail coming into to play, I could envisage that what's going to happen is more people are going to be willing to move out away from Honolulu because then they can just jump on the train and get to work. They don't have that, you know, that uh, brutal commute every morning. And, and if mm -hmm. the commute's easier, they're more likely to to move out away from Honolulu, but I can imagine what the implications would be for property values. Right, and also you're creating more um, population capacity in an area with uh, adequate infrastructure, because as you know, the rail starts in um, East Kapolei. Right. So in order for people who live in the valley, for example, they would have to take one, two, three, at least three or four buses in order to get to the destination of the, um, the rail site. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Or they're going to have to ride that moped, moped, you know, all the way. Or bicycle. Or, or, bicycle, or find yes. a job closer to home. And yes. that's another initiative that, you know, we're collectively working with within the community. Um, I know that there are some individuals and organizations. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, they have a meeting tonight and they will be talking about, you know, what kind of economic stimuluses and job growth that they can create in the Waianae Coast. Well, you know, one of the advents of the internet and technology is that you don't necessarily have to do a brutal commute to work every day. Yes. You know, um, a lot of people are learning to do work from home mm -hmm. or they only commute two or three days out of the week. They don't have to commute every single day because they have the ability to sort of transcommute. Yes. Um, and do what they need to take care of uh, without getting caught in traffic. Uh, and I also think that there's going to be a lot more development around uh, Disney area there? Yes, over in Ko'olina. Ko'olina, yeah, the yes. Ko'olina area. Um, I can imagine that there's going to be more development uh, in that area that will bring more jobs mm -hmm. and that will have a spillover effect to grow that economy. I know, Has uh, is it Hasegawa? Hasegawa Corporation is... Um, um, actually, um, is it? You're, you're, are you thinking Haseko? Haseko, sorry. Haseko, yeah. yes. Haseko, my apologies. Haseko is building, planning to build more hotels. 
Yes, and more houses too, and right? And more houses, yeah. yes. So with all that going on, um, you know, I anticipate that that's going to stimulate the economy there and provide more jobs and more opportunities. So for people, instead of commuting all the way to Honolulu, mm -hmm. may only have to commute to the Kapolei area. Yes. Let's okay. hope that those jobs come to the people that live closer to the area instead of having to, you know, transport themselves all the way into Honolulu. Yeah, you know, the, uh, I, I, I can envisage too that if we have um, buses, and once we have the rail system, mm -hmm. a lot of the buses that we use now to commute those people can be re routed. redirected, rerouted, mm -hmm. or repurposed. Uh, on different routes. Yes, I'd like to see that. Yes, yeah, so that, maybe that's we'll an have excellent idea. We'll have more routes that will just have like do a straight, you know, straight run to the, the train station. Or less way. less buses instead of four buses, maybe just one. How's about that? I think yeah. We'll just what we'll do is we'll just atta keep attaching the buses <laughs> one to the other. Like Legos. <laughs> that's the right. Other. It'll be like a big train all right way. <laughs> In the perfect world, right? In the perfect world, yeah. Um, so that's so. We, if we see that kind of development going on, um, then you know, are we, you know, that's going to have further implications. Now, is that one of the questions? Um, landfill facility is that closed down? Is that done? No. As a matter of fact, all of the landfills that are existing in the district um, are still present. Are still present. Yes. Now, what is the situation with those? Are they at close to capacity? Are they adding more capacity? As a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, the um, solid municipal waste, also known as Waimanalo Gulch, they're looking at an extension. But I've been um, somewhat pushing the council member there to either look for an additional site, where is your site, and mm -hmm. um, through discussions with, directly with her at community meetings, she had stated that she would not support any additional um, landfills on this island. Um, so, she's looking at okay. perhaps using technology as a as a resource to help alleviate the amount of trash. But also in that, we need to follow up and find out what types of initiatives either is she looking at uh -huh. or is she helping to work with the city and county to fund those initiatives to ensure that they become a reality. Well, is it possible that some of that could be used as part of a land reclamation project? I, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, if we want to have growth and development, uh, perhaps one of, we, one of the things that we need to do is look at um, doing more land reclamation mm -hmm. and making uh, usable land available. I don't know if maybe that's, a, that's mm -hmm. I think the, the Japanese sort of initiated that concept. Yes, I've seen it. I think it they built an airport out over of it. Reclaimed or or land. Um, park areas, they'll grass it over, uh -huh. golf courses. Well, we I've did that at Kakaako Park, right? Right, right. And that's been a great success. Mm -hmm. And I'd hate to say this, but at one time, even Hawaii Kai, right? They, their area was a fill. Mm -hmm. Fill area. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one one thing I did want to mention, I did see today that we are losing our, the last of our sugar cane on Maui. Uh, on Maui. Mm -hmm. That's really sad to see. It is. That's, it is. That's uh, that's part of our culture and mm -hmm. tradition of Hawaii. Is the, the and that's what sort of Hawaii got its start mm -hmm. was in growing sugar cane. And it's provided many jobs for generations of families, yes. Kamaina families yes. here in our yes. islands. That's really sad to see. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's interesting because right now we're kind of talking about, you know, like um, different economies and how they've changed and how they've impacted negatively or positively on our community. So uh -huh. perhaps later we can discuss um, a little bit more about our state plan, our Hawaii state plan. Well, that's what we existence. need to talk about is where do we go forward from here? Yes. Uh, we're going to take a short break. I'm Chris Leatham. This is The Economy in You, and we'll be right back. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Kawe Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. We address issues of importance for those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet. Please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. Mahalo. Aloha, welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Josh Green. I'm the host of a program called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'm a physician. I work in the emergency department on the Big Island. I also serve in the state senate, which please don't hold that against me, doesn't detract from my television program. We speak about all the big health care issues in the state. We get together on Tuesdays from 2 o'clock till 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And we try to talk about the most important issues in health care. This is a terrific venue for people to learn about health care. There are many programs on this on this station. We broadcast it later, uh, not just on the internet, but also on OC16. 
Thanks for joining us. Please be informed healthcare consumers. Hi, we're back. I'm Chris Leatham, and this is The Economy and You, and today's guest is... Karen Awana. Thank you for being here, Karen. Thank you, Chris. Um, so we are, um, we were talking a little bit about uh, things going on on the Wai'anae Coast, um, but I also wanted to talk a little bit about this uh, AHA and some of the things that came out of it, um, and, and maybe share a little bit with folks about what AHA, what, what sort of initiated it and what his intention was, because I think for a lot of people that aren't Hawaiian, uh, it was sort of outside looking in. Mm -hmm. And you had, as a vice chair, you had an opportunity to, to be on the inside. What was happening in there. Yeah. Well, my understanding of the AHA was to create documents to take to the greater Hawaiian community as to our next steps. I know that um, Governor Abercrombie, he had initiated um, the law to go ahead and look at self-determination for Native Hawaiians. Uh -huh. And then prior to that, we had President Clinton who signed the apology bill. So it's mm -hmm. just that natural progression as to what our next steps are into looking for um, self-determination, sovereignty, and independence. Mm -hmm. So that's what that gathering was um, about, to, for everyone to come together and discuss the issues, um, look at what tools are available to us. So we had speakers that came from um, throughout the world, from New Zealand, also, um, from the Navajo Nation, someone who had a, uh, and another gentleman who had a greater understanding of constitutions and the different um, components of a constitution. So we had a learning experience during okay. the first week, and then from that we were able to go ahead and um, draft our own constitutions and declarations, okay. Okay. voted on that, and hence that's what you will see if you go to the AHA 2016 um, website. Okay, that's that's very interesting. In a nutshell. Now, I imagine everybody just uh, sat around and sang Kumbaya and, and uh, old Hawaiian songs mm -hmm. and yeah. got along perfectly. Of course not. <laughs> we're not Hawaiians. We have opinions and we're not afraid to share what our position is on some issues. And at times it was, you know, it was very argumentative and, uh -huh. and people were not getting along. And you'll see with the footage, so it's nothing new that I'm, <laughs> I'm sharing to people. Uh -huh. But, you know, at the end, we come to a decision on how we want to move forward. And then we go ahead and we move forward in whatever decision or choices that we've made. So are you happy with the outcome? Well, I've learned a lot, uh -huh. and to be happy, I know that the document is still a working document. Okay. And also know that um, there was a committee, um, national committee, that came out with uh, two declarations and two constitutions as well. So uh, your viewers may want to take a look at those as well as the constitution that was on the front page of the. So when you talk about news. two constitutions, are these addressing sort of different topics? There or are they two different versions, or how would you describe well, them? Well, I would describe them as being different levels of independence. And um, some of the documents were created in the past, and people wanted to share those documents with the greater um, group uh, for a review and, and maybe even our greater Hawaiian community and community at large as well, right? Mm -hmm. To see what type of components are different from the others. Just so that, you know, like I had mentioned earlier, it's to provide documents to our community to let them know of the things that we've been working on okay, during okay. that time. So yeah. because this really, to me, the underlying theme of this is self-determination. Yes, and then there's various degrees of self-determination, right? right? Some would rather, um, as we had mentioned earlier, be um, under the Department of Interior. Some don't want to be in the Department of Interior. Um, well, because the American Indians, of course, have had a mixed, very mixed experience. Yes. There are some American Indian tribes that have done very well for themselves mm -hmm. uh, with very little government support. And then there are those who, even though they've had government support, have had a lot of challenges through the decades. Yes. And so I would think that one of the things that I would look at it from, from that perspective mm -hmm. is what models were the most successful models for, you know, in, in the world of self-determination? Mm -hmm. You know, what models have worked well mm -hmm. and which ones have not? Yes. Uh, um, just to share with you, I served yes. as the um, vice chair of the 
in CSL, National Conference of State Legislators. State legislators, right. yes. They're Native American, uh, Alaska Indians, and Native Hawaiian Caucus. Mm -hmm. So I served in that capacity as well and was quite active in working alongside um, other Native American, uh, other but Native American tribes. Yes. To hear, you know, share what their um, successes were as well as what the challenges were. Mm -hmm. What I can share with you about those who have been successful what they had to do is actually pick themselves from their bootstraps and um, truly take self-determination to a whole nother level. They're, they're the ones who went ahead and created their own businesses yes. to draw um, interest either by casinos or shopping or whatever the industry uh -huh. was that they uh -huh. were able to um, be successful in. And then other Indian tribes who are having a lot um, harder time, it, because of varying degrees and similar to areas where you have a lot of poverty yes. you know it, it kind of pulls them down <coughs> weighs them down yes. it's very difficult for um, some of our Native uh, American tribes to be as successful as others. And it, I think there's there is a challenge there because I am um, if you if you are just sort of being given enough to, 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 to get by mm -hmm. I coming from a family that's not very well off. I know my family as for, you know, always sort of operated at a subsistence level. Mm -hmm. And so getting out of a subsistence mindset uh, has always been very challenging. And it even, even today it's hard mm -hmm. to get them to think about growing a business, starting a company. They just sort of live, you know, mm -hmm. from paycheck to paycheck. And to set new goals and new objectives and to work hard to achieve those mm -hmm. um, when they've already adopted a sort of a subsistence paradigm is very is a very difficult bowl mm -hmm. to break and unfortunately that's the case for many of the native americans mm -hmm. you know unbeknownst many people probably think that you know they're already casinos and everything is fine <laughs> they're not already casinos. but i've seen you know yes. for myself firsthand there's some native american tribes you know their floors are made of dirt and they don't even have running water you know they have to travel many many miles to get it mm -hmm. not close to any type of conveniences like a store even to get fresh fresh fruit or vegetables so, you know, there's, there's some things that are taking place to help address that, but still, you know, these mm -hmm. are the, it, it's almost like living in, it's like living in squander, yes. you know, the, the situation, that yeah. it's, and it's really unfortunate. So do you see AHA as a bridge to help people move out of that paradigm? I think it's one in many steps, uh -huh. and um, it's created an awareness to everyone to realize that you must be engaged if you want to be heard. You can't just sit in the back and you know, say your piece because you, in order to make this event or um, our Native Hawaiian situation better, uh -huh. you need to engage. You have to engage. You must you know, engage. I, I got to tell a quick little story that I, while I was in, uh, on the mainland a, a couple weeks ago, the gentleman told me a story about this minister who went to, uh, was invited to dinner at a lady's house and she's there and the, the gentleman sits down and he hears the dog whine and the dog starts whining louder and louder and louder and uh, he just tries to ignore it, and, uh, and then the lady invites him, she prepares the food, and he goes sit at the kitchen table, and the dog starts whining again, and he's whining louder and louder and louder. And he, and he looks at the lady, and he says, is there something wrong with your dog? She says, well, he's laying on a nail. <laughs> oh, that's so yes. sad. Yes, he's laying on a nail. And he says, well, why doesn't he get yeah. up? Says apparently it bothers him, but it doesn't bother him enough to actually do anything about, about it. it. Ah, yeah, that's right, that's right. You need to empower yourself. Get off the <laughs> that's nail. That's right, get off Become the nail. Become engaged. Yes. Let your voice be heard. Exactly. Hence. Yes, yeah, so it was a it was a, a great metaphor mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. for you know engaging and empowering yourself to get up and actually do something mm -hmm. about the problems that you have in your community mm -hmm. and engage. Mm -hmm. You know, because if we don't. And we just lay there and lay on the nail and whine, we nothing changes. Wine changes. Yes, yeah. nothing changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're working on, also you're working on some initiatives? Yes. Um, did I mention our state library? Tell us about the yeah, state library okay. because, you know, libraries are changing. <clears throat> Definitely. Yes. And it's, this is another project that I've been working on for maybe about 10 years now, working with our state library system mm -hmm. on establishing a library of our own in this community of Nanakuli. And um, like, like you had shared, libraries are changing, mm -hmm. and ours is going to be the best library ever. Good, good. It will be um, a state-of-the-art library, a large, um, it's about seven-acre parcel. Wow, um, that's huge. Yes, 
and the design will be of that of um, Native Hawaiian. Okay. Um, the design will also be energy efficient, mm -hmm. so um, it'll use least amount of energy. Photovoltaic. Okay. We'll have our main um, hub and also a, a side building for community meetings. There'll be a lawn out in the front area for uh, all the other meetings. Events. Oh. Yeah, or like community <laughs> events where yes, people can right. share yes. or nighttime movies or hula shows and programs. Uh -huh. And it'll be adjacent to the Nana Ikapono. Right now they're actually undergoing construction. So if you live out there, you have to, unless you don't go in and out of the coast, you wouldn't know what it is. Okay. But now you know. Okay, it's our awesome. state library. Now, lay libraries are a very empowering um, facility. Yes. Um, because, you know, we achieve success through education. Mm -hmm. And li libraries definitely bring that to the fore. Mm -hmm. You know, an opportunity for the community to, to become educated, um, having all those resources available. Yes. It was shared to me once in, in this, this sentence. It always stuck with me that education is the great equalizer. And to have a library in our community, I, I think it's something very special, something that's long overdue. Mm -hmm. And for many people, they, they're under the assumption that many communities already have, um, everyone already has their own computer. They already know how to use technology and their works, they're comfortable with workstation, but that's not the case. So that's something that we will be incorporating to allow a safe, quiet yes. facility yes. for people who may not otherwise have had that opportunity. And, and that's great because, you know, I, I will confess that um, I thought my mother knew everything about computers because she's mm -hmm. always on the computer. And then I asked her to find a file on her computer. I said, go look at such and such a folder. She goes, what folder? I said, <laughs> there are folders on your computer, Mom. Don't you know? <laughs> she says, oh, I don't know anything about that. Where do that. I click, right? Yeah, uh, she just saved everything on the screen. screen. <laughs> I'm just like, I can't believe See, it. She's still there, and we'll yes. be having classes. Uh -huh. I said, you know, you can, or and you can organize all this mm -hmm. stuff. You know, mm -hmm. This is why computer yeah. classes are sometimes an imperative. And like, after all these years, she still didn't know that there were folders <laughs> yeah, on her yeah, computer. Yeah. See? I thought it was just it was so hysterical. Uh, but now, besides the library, are there any other in, in, interesting in, initiatives going on out there? Um, like I mentioned um, earlier, we have a, a group of people working with the um, Waina Economic Development Organization, working on um, creating job opportunities, different micro businesses or businesses that will uh -huh. help support maybe even Ko'olina. Well, let's go. We're going to take another commercial break, okay. break. And when we come back, I want to talk about micro lending a little bit. Okay, Because for, for our folks out there, if they don't know what that is, maybe we can discuss that a little bit and, and get people excited about that. Okay, we'll okay. do. I'm Chris Leatham, and this is The Economy New, and we'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina with the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii, and one of our delights is to be partnered with Think Tech Hawaii and produce programs every week. Every Monday at 2 o'clock, we have a show called Ehana Kako, which means let's work together. So we bring people from all across the nation and the country, and certainly throughout the islands together here to talk with them about how to work together, and how to work together to do the following, to build a better economy, a better government, a better society. So if you're interested in the research of our think tank, the Grassroot Institute, or if you're interested in how that's applied at the governmental and community and business levels, you'll enjoy the fascinating conversations with our guests on Ehana Kako every week on Think Tech Hawaii at 2 o'clock on Mondays. Until our next show, I'll see you Hello. Oh, we're live. Hi, I'm Chris Lee. We're back. We got, hey, Zuri snuck up on me there. Uh, well, welcome. Uh, and we, today's guest is Karen Awana. And um, I wanted to, we were just talking a little bit about some of the uh, initiatives going on on the Waianae mm -hmm. Coast. And you were talking about how they're going to start starting micro businesses. Yes. And uh, one of the things that helps micro businesses get launched are, is micro lending. Uh -huh. Now, micro lending, for people that aren't too familiar with it, is a way to go to places like Pacific Gateway Center and apply for a small business loan. You don't necessarily have to have any collateral, uh, but what you do need is a business idea. Mm -hmm. So if you've got an idea for a small business that you want to get started, and uh, micro lending is something that has been done uh, successfully uh, throughout uh, the developing world. Okay. So when I, when I hear about um, micro, micro businesses, business. I get excited because mm -hmm. this is an opportunity 
-hmm. for people to you know get engaged and get started on their own small home businesses and and by the way women are some of the best uh, borrowers when it comes to repaying their loans wow. they, work, they work earnestly to repay the money uh, for a, a small business loan um, wonderful I love that information yes so your viewers will be empowered as well as you know, I have another tip to share at my meeting when I go later on. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Did you know they have micro lending at the Pacific Gateway Center? Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, also, um, there's the you know, banks are also required uh, under the Community Reinvestment Act mm -hmm. uh, to do small business loans. Oh, nice. Yes. Now they will often go through entities like the Pacific Gateway Center, but they're required to put money back into the community. Um, and these are also great for people that are, you know, want to do home fixer-uppers. Yes. You know, fixer-upper loans to mm -hmm. go back and fix up their house. Um, there are, you know, there are areas throughout our island where the homes of somewhat neighborhood, some of the neighborhoods mm -hmm. and homes have, have sort of run down. Mm -hmm. um, and these folks also have an opportunity to go back and borrow money through the Community Reinvestment Act to sort of reinvigorate these homes and... Uh, these home improvement loans. Yeah, right? do the home improvement loans. Yes, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. wonderful things. Yeah. And, and you're uh, talking about agriculture too. Yes. Yeah, we have yes. a lot of agriculture out in the district. Well, there is. There's a lot of agriculture. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people there with great, agri you know, farming skills. Yes. And uh, through uh, Pacific Gateway Center, I know that one of their big initiatives is to help people do ag uh, small business agricultural loans mm -hmm. uh, to get started with uh, either you know doing small you know the uh, tilapia fisheries. Yes. Uh, and or growing specialty crops. Mm -hmm. So that's all very exciting stuff. Mm -hmm. And something that has taken off out in that district in particular is, you know, organic um, farming, ma'o farms, mm -hmm. as well as, um, I'm not too sure if you're familiar with this, it's something called Korean natural farming. Oh. Or, have you heard of this? Please share, no, please share. Okay, well, um, one of the, the two issues is the high cost of um, either feed or pesticides. Mm -hmm. With this natural farming, it creates um, a symbiotic system where everything works together. You don't have to use the expense of um, the two most expensive, the feed and the mm -hmm. pesticides or herbicides. Uh -huh. And so, you know, virtually your yield is a lot healthier. Um, you use a lot less money in order to grow it. And, you know, it's something that's really taking off on the Waianae Coast, as well as okay. other parts of this island and throughout the Big Island. You know, I heard, I heard of one of these initiatives, I'll just share this with us, is they had, the chicken farmers had put the shrimp pools mm -hmm. underneath the chicken. And the chicken poop would mm -hmm. fall down. And, and the shrimp the eat shrimp it? And the shrimp eat it. <laughs> and then we eat the shrimp, right? <laughs> and then right? we eat the shrimp. And I'm just like, do I really want to know this? <laughs> Too much information. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. Or the shrimp can be used as, you know, fertilizer for your... Well, that's right. And, yeah. of course, the, the, the leftover part of the shrimp mm -hmm. also uh, gets used as a... a um, Emulsion? Or yes, mm -hmm. yes. It gets used for lots of things. Yes. Um, which get you, you know, so it's this whole reuse thing and... Mm -hmm. re and creating these symbiotic relationships. Now, why can't we do that at the legislature? We can. Why can't we create Everything a symbiotic relationship at our legislature? <laughs> we can. Everything is possible. <laughs> like I said, we can put people on the moon. We can get that highway. We can create mm -hmm. a very um, mutual relationship. Well, creating a highway. Now, did we talk about that? I think we talked we about did, that. We did. We uh, did. But then we also talked about the different topics we've been discussing yes. on your program today about, you know, we were talking about agriculture, transportation, uh -huh. economic development. And um, this is another initiative that I'm looking forward to seeing some type of um, improvement in is our Hawaii State Plan. Yes. Uh, state Plan was established back in 1970. And then, unfortunately, um, through time, it's Take, it's gotten less and less priority, but it's extremely important because it, it dictates or it plans out, you know, what areas of education, what kind of businesses, mm -hmm. um, where are we going to keep our agriculture, where we're going to um, you know, do really tourism. Important. Yeah, that's really yes. important because we've got some great ag land that has been marked for development. Yes. And we need to re go back and maybe mm -hmm. re reassess those, those plans. Yes, and that's a bill that I introduced, um, mm. having had heard about that, because I'm like, there's so much development and everything that's taking place, which is all as well, but at the same time, like, we have to really think about how we're doing it so that, you know, we can all benefit. We live on an island state. Right. We have limited amount of resources. Mm -hmm. So it takes all of those issues into consideration, and there is a department already established for that one particular purpose, and if we can all, you know, <coughs> relook at that, I know mm -hmm. that the governor had um, introduced a bill this year 
you know, dedicating funds and asking the legislature for their support. And, you know, let's keep our fingers crossed that that particular bill moves forward. It keeps moving. Yes. 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 Do we know who the committee chairs are? <clears throat> I know that um, Senate President um, Ron Kochi introduced it oh, on behalf okay. of the governor because it is well, a governor. Then it should have session. some legs. If yes, he's I hope so. Yes. I hope so. <laughs> It'll be a good thing for all of us. That's all I have to I say. I think it's, it's really an imperative that we really have smart development here. Mm -hmm. We do have limited land. Our population does continue to grow. I don't see it not growing in any time in the foreseeable future. Um, and um, I think if we're going to have growth that's successful, we need to have smart growth. And we do need to have a, a plan with a clear set of objectives. Yes, definitely. Yeah, so I, I can see the, the value of that. Mm -hmm. and I. I do like, but one thing I did want to touch on is, is the idea of a road leaving Wainai. Yes. Because I don't think we talked about that on the air. I think we talked about that before the we highway? were on the air. The highway, yes. Yes. Having a second highway that would allow people to drive from the west uh, coast and have another way in and out of that area. Yes. Now, is that, has there been a bill or uh, a resolution introduced uh, to accomplish that? Yes, actually there's been numerous bills, uh, numerous reports. Um, currently, it is a project listed on the Oahu Metropolitan Planning um, mm -hmm. Organization's plan. So we just have to like continue to ensure that it doesn't, you know, disappear and fall off to the side. And Sometimes things get, can get bumped up, but then yes. other times you can see them get knocked off yes. the list. Yes. yes. So yeah. we just have to make sure that that continues to be a priority mm -hmm. for our state because, as you know, many of our people are stranded, and, you know, let's see what we can do to ensure that. It just seems to make final. sense that you'd ought to have more than one way in and out. Yes. Anywhere yes. on this island. Especially with a population of that size. Yes. That's growing and growing and growing. It would just seem that it's advantageous for everybody, mm -hmm. especially in terms of having economic growth, mm -hmm. uh, in case there's an emergency. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's a typhoon that comes in or something like mm -hmm. that, and you want to be able to get people out of that area. Yes. But as you know, Chris, we're working with 70-something other legislators and senators, and everyone sees their prior project as a priority project. Yeah, not, not, so I, I here we go. That. I can't understand that. I can't understand that. So that know that what, what roads dear to my heart may not be dear to someone, <laughs> say, on another island or another part of the island. Well, I, I've always found that, you know, one of the challenges um, when you work with legislation is everybody comes there with an, a, an agenda. And the people that are not in the legislature, the people that come there, it seems to be the people on either end of an issue, often the sort of the polar extremes. Yes. The people who are sort of sitting fat and happy in the middle don't show up. Mm -hmm. And they don't necessarily engage to the extent that that would be beneficial for them to engage because it's really hard to get these two when, polar, when opposites. polar opposites to come together mm -hmm. and sit down and draft something collaboratively because <laughs> their agendas are so far apart. It would be nice if we had more folks, and this is the key to all you folks out there, is. Uh, Please um, come out and uh, participate at the legislature and engage mm -hmm. in the political process. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, for somebody who uh, looking to run for the legislature again, um, I always try to tell people go back to the legislative website and we and need see. To, yeah right. and see what bills are coming. I don't know. You know, it's hard. There's so many bills that come up, and it, the, the, one of the things I would have a criticism over is the searching search feature on the legislative website it's not cumbersome uh, yeah it's cumbersome it that uh, it uh, it doesn't seem to be able to prioritize search the search the search engine algorithms aren't built very well um, and it's hard to find bills that you're looking for um, I'd like to see that maybe improved uh, I think more people would you know, if it was easy to find the bills that you're looking for, mm -hmm. I think more people would get less frustrated with that and maybe participate more. I agree. I yes. agree with you. Yeah. Because many times, you know, even in social media, they refer to, you know, uh, the description of the bill. Mm -hmm. But my first question is, what bill number is it? Because yes. I know that'll get me on the fast track to seeing what the status and who introduced it and if it's gaining any traction or not. So, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, Unless I, you know the bill number, yes, yeah. even if you do a keyword search, then you know it takes you down. You, you, what happens is you get you get eighty tunnel. bills when you're trying mm -hmm. to look for one, so it does make it mm -hmm. very cha challenging. So I might suggest somebody who's developed this type software. of software before. I, I find it frustrating because mm -hmm. I know I can do it better yeah. than that. So. <laughs>
<laughs> but anyway, it was Thanks great to have you on the show today, Karen. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for I, having I me, Chris. Really I really do appreciate it. you coming on. Thank you. And um, I hope you all the success in the upcoming. Uh, uh, um, I know campaigning is hard work. It is. Yes. But it's also... Uh, uh, Very fulfilling, fulfilling at the same time. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Yeah. So uh, thank you again for being on the show. Yes, and thank you too. And uh, best of luck to all of your future endeavors. Yes. So, wherever it may lead you. And, and maybe back to the capital. I, maybe. <laughs> so I'm Chris Leatham here with Think Tech. Uh, and uh, you've just been watching The Economy and You. And we'll see you again. <laughs>